um, I will just kind of conclude um, the aspect just to talk about uh, sickle cell disease. Um, and we know that sickle cell disease, the outcome of sickle cell disease has changed over time. Um, survival is changing over time. Um, in the past, it used to be a, a disease of children, very young children, and now we have adults. And um, some of this uh, is attributable treatable to uh, some of the interventions, uh, including newborn screening, including um, um, various uh, drug therapies. So, so, so uh, this is definitely changing, and changing according to where you are born and where you live. Um, and really, that's the story of sickle cell disease. That's also the, sickle cell, the story of thalassemia. Um, and um, obviously, one of the major issues about sickle cell disease is uh, polymerization. That is uh, where the sickle really kind of uh, adopt a kind of a shape and becomes quite a, a problem, uh, which I just want to show in here really uh, as to what happened in terms of sickle cell disease. Um, and uh, earlier on, um, one of the speakers has kind of described the, um, the, the hemoglobin uh, structure. Uh, polymerization is a major problem in sickle cell disease. Obviously, if you know polymerization, uh, then um, obviously there have been no sickle cell problems. Uh, and that leads to uh, progressive uh, sickling and, um, and with a consequence of uh, hemolysis, uh, obstruction, and um, infections and a lot of cascade of uh, problems uh, and leading to um, uh, chronic uh, hemolysis uh, is one of the phenomena. And uh, as we know very well, uh, which is something that people live with, who live with sickle cell disease recognize, uh, which also when we were talking to medical students, you can say that sickle cell disease affects almost every organ. Um, obviously, um, we talk about pulmonary hypertension, we talk about um, uh, kidney uh, problems and uh, 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 chest problems and hepatopathies. And, uh, and obviously, uh, we have emphasized some of these problems in sickle cell disease. But actually, some of these problems are beginning to be very clear that are also cause uh, similar problems in, in thalassemia, but particularly things like uh, the kidneys. Uh, and, and bone is actually well known in, in, in thalassemia, but also well known in because quite very clear in sickle cell disease. And, and some of these things uh, are a consequence of a combination of uh, hemolysis and a combination of uh, obstruction. Um, and uh, the, the prevalence of these uh, disorders uh, varies from one uh, area to the other. Uh, and also depending on what uh, management you have uh, received um, and, and knowing particularly uh, in terms of uh, chronic renal uh, impairment uh, can happen very early on. Um, some of it would be uh, starting with hyperfiltrations, uh, protein loss, and, and subsequent um, chronic kidney uh, impairment, and an end-stage renal failure, and knowing that a management such a transplant could be very limited in terms of the outcomes. And uh, cerebrovascular events, uh, stroke being a very major problem, and, um, and cardiac events. So how do you manage these problems? Uh, standard management, our usual management, uh, remains very important despite all the aspect about uh, innovative therapies. Um, and um, hydroxyurea remains a very uh, key um, uh, agent. Um, and uh, w we know that one of the major mechanisms is to increase the fetal hemoglobin. And uh, so I was just listening quite carefully to Dr. Piga. I thought he would say that losparticep actually raises fetal hemoglobin. Unfortunately, he didn't give me good news on that one. But I was just wondering anything that can actually go and improve the fetal cells I may probably improve sickle cell disease as well. Um, and so, yeah, so the, the essence of uh, hydroxyurea, and one of the main things is to improve the fetal hemoglobin uh, because we know that fetal hemoglobin does not cooperate with the sickling in terms of the sickling process. So it keeps the oxygen, keeps the sickle, in, I mean, the rest in a very good state. Um, and, and so the, um, the, the, the treatment uh, obviously has been shown uh, to uh, re reduce the, the frequency of crisis uh, and the risk of and the frequency of admissions, hospital admissions. And uh, so if you look at uh, the, the um, times to face occlusive pain, uh, so obviously it takes you twice the time to actually have a second uh, pain compared to somebody who is not on on hydroxyurea, and also um, uh, even the second one is also kind of increased. And, and the uh, uh, main needs in terms of hydroxyurea, uh, despite all the encouragement that you give to patients, um, 
they might not really take them, but people are worried that this is a cancer treatment, uh, and therefore they are really kind of very, very worried. Um, and we know that, yes, uh, not everybody that is on hydroxyl actually would be the one that is going to uh, not come to hospital, but also we are still, still going on cons concerns about fertility, uh, and therefore some of the people would actually stop it because really don't not understand, but we are reassuring because really that's, I mean, some of this can be uh, reversible, and we remain very positive in terms of uh, the benefit of hydroxy uh, urea. Blood transfusion is well known and well known in terms of its benefit in terms of uh, really remains the primary uh, source of um, uh, improvement in patient related outcomes but we know that it comes with uh, its own uh, challenges but also we also know that um, I had the story, the first story that um, um, the, the, the patient spoke about earlier on his journey. Um, you can see the challenge in terms of uh, blood availability in, um, in low resource uh, countries. And uh, so majority of people cannot have access to that. What are, what are the various things that we can give to people? So some of the new therapies, um, we are, we're now beginning to have this. Uh, obviously, Voxoleto uh, was approved in 2019 by the FDA. Um, some countries are already using it. And we are just in the United Kingdom, we're beginning to uh, use it. And and um, currently we are at a position that we are allowed to, I mean, we get it free of charge, um, but uh, hopefully uh, going forward we might get some uh, clarity. So how does it work? Uh, you know that, so voxolotol is a small molecule that actually uh, binds and improves the oxygen um, and keep the oxygen around um, in the, within this, the, 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 the red cell. And by doing that, it reduces uh, the hemolysis and therefore increases the amount of uh, hemoglobin and uh, the trial looked at different doses um, in adults, but subsequently uh, uh, looking at um, in, in children. But um, uh, this, this trial uh, under, under license was initially from age 12 and, and above, um, um, but uh, subsequently reduced to age four in the US. Uh, in, in most of European countries, uh, we're still working on the age 12 and above, and um, so that this would, would improve the hemoglobin uh, and, and I like this waterfall, and I saw, uh, so you look at the waterfall uh, 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 graph, uh, for those who had a higher dose of uh, voxelato, um, if you just take them, so these are, look, these are individual patients, so it's only patient, the hemoglobin increases by uh, uh, up to uh, 40, others uh, by one, and, and, and others, um, there's a small, uh, compared to the, the, those who are in a lower dose, so more people in this group have um, a very negative response, and especially those in the placebo who did not take uh, voxelato, um, the, the, the response was much less compared to uh, those who uh, took voxelato. So obviously it, it kind of shows significant that an increase in the uh, N uh, hemoglobin uh, that patient who took voxelato, and especially those who took a higher dose, um, had a higher hemoglobin. Uh, and and, and uh, so this was a follow-up study to see uh, does the response continue and 72 weeks on, yes, the response continued. And in fact, in some patients who did not respond initially actually showed an increase in hemoglobin. The main challenge about uh, Voxolito is the fact that we have not really shown that it shows a reduction in pain and improvement in other uh, patient-related outcomes. But uh, real life, uh, experience with voxelato, but those who have been using it uh, shows that um, it improves leg oxidation, and leg ulcer is a major, major problem in sickle cell disease, and sometimes it completely uh, defies any attempt to treat it. Um, so if that is one of the things, uh, and also uh, current studies are looking at the effect of uh, voxelato on uh, transcranial Doppler scan, which is the increase in velocity in sickle cell disease, which is a marker of increased risk for stroke. Um, and, and this was a real life experience showing some of the side effects that people experience by taking Voxolito. But uh, these are not different from some of the side effects that are reported in the trial. So um, it shows that in real life experience, a number of years on, uh, it's still kind of acceptable and the side effects are actually uh, manageable. Um, and, and selecting inhibitors, uh, something that, um, again, we, we know the. Uh, 
a lot of different selectin inhibitors, uh, pan-selectin inhibitors. But one of the major, so obviously this is located in the various cells and therefore increases the marginalization and the fact that increases in endothelial interaction and subsequently more cycling, more obstruction, more hemolysis. Uh, so if you can reduce that, then you reduce the tissue injury. Uh, and so uh, crizanlizumab, um, uh, is the um, typical example that has gone into the license, license also in 2019, and and, and this is the, is given uh, once a month as once a month uh, intravenous injection. And uh, initially, I was a bit worried that that might be something that will not be acceptable, but actually, it's something that uh, you know is given it. And actually, if you can reduce the crisis and improve the outcome, then obviously, um, it's something that uh, is now we now have a managed access in the UK. Um, and uh, we are allowed to use it, and it's going to be reassessed to see uh, the benefit uh, for patients and to see um, whether this will now go into a full, nice uh, license. But to be given, it's going to be approved by the networks that I talked about earlier on, which is the coordinating centers. So that needs to be approved through that pathway. And this was the initial trial, and this trial was from age 16 and above. Um, and, 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 and this showed that even those who are on hydroxy they are benefited from the effect and those who took a smaller dose of 2.5 did not do as well as those who took a higher dose of 5.0 milligrams per kilogram. But now the current dose has been increased to 8.5 milligrams per kg uh, in the current trial. And uh, we're leading some of these trials in the UK, but some of these trials are also happening in Africa to uh, give a possibility of access. Some of the new... Uh, uh, um, uh, Agents, obviously, uh, particularly uh, metopivot, which has been well used in thalassemia, has a long route and is talking about improving the level of ATP, and improving the red cell health, improving the integrity of the red cell uh, is something that uh, really um, we are in the UK about to um, start uh, the children uh, arms of the study uh, uh, for uh, metopivot. Um, but like I said, in thalassemia is already in phase three, but in sickle cell disease in phase two. And, and uh, so these are just activating the PK and leading to um, improvement in the ATP production. So, and the other one is etopivot, which is similarly action with the um, metopivot uh, by a different company, but slightly different uh, mechanism of, I mean, similar action, but uh, more, more different in terms of its uh, purity or the, or the effect of, of, of the um, PK activators. So, um, and, 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 and this again, we're now in phase one, phase two uh, trials. Um, and it's expected that uh, both these trials are actually going to involve a number of African countries and a num uh, to make sure that uh, people, where people live with sickle cell disease, they actually benefit from uh, some of these uh, drug interactions. Um, so it shows that um, this reduces the degree of hemolysis and also uh, improves the hemoglobin. And both trials, uh, the endpoint is a rise in hemoglobin. Um, and so, uh, but. In addition to that, it does have the potential of having some other benefits, uh, including the patient-related outcomes, which are actually measuring as well. Um, so in summary, the uh, pyruvate kinase activators are the reduced polymerization by decreasing uh, the 2,3 TPG and also improving the ATP. Uh, and, and this actually subsequently improves um, the rest of uh, uh, integrity. And so improves the anemia, reduce the coagulation, activation, and reduce inflammation, and reduce oxidative stress, which is a similar action to also L-glutamine as well. Um, so um, and you have talked about the curative therapy, the gene therapy, uh, and also, um, so I'm not going to talk about that, but just want to summarize um, this slide, um, which is this one, is that um, sickle cell disease, obviously we know is a debilitating chronic progressive genetic disorder with a high unmet needs. Uh, polymerization and also uh, obstruction, all of these are combined and leads to um, very uh, adverse outcomes on uh, almost every organ. So if you're teaching a medical student about sickle cell disease, you say that it can affect every organ. And, and, and that is um, kind of really a key message. But actually, we, uh, even though we have very useful therapies, there still remains a gap in access, but there also remains a gap in availability, and also remains a gap in terms of the points of action. So thank you, and good afternoon.